Oh, hey there. Hey there, friends. Uh, caught me. I guess you caught me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a card trick today. A little bit of a good one. This is a nice, interesting card force that requires a little bit of subtlety. Now, this isn't going to be a force for everyone because it does require something called uh, a little bit of balls. But apart from that, it's going to be a good force that you could do if you want to do a simple force that doesn't require any sort of work on your end. So you know what? Let's just get into it. No intro. We're doing it raw, baby. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a card force is, may I suggest looking at the Pig Cake Magic Academy, where $5 a month gets you two videos every single week, going over card stuff, coin stuff, and you get to learn all the forces that you want. You get access to over 800 videos the moment you sign up. Rave reviews all around. Check it out. Link is going to be in the description below. You won't regret it. Uh, a card force is a way of making somebody pick a playing card and make it seem like it's a free choice, but it's not a free choice. It's something that's predetermined by you, the professional virgin at hand. As a matter of fact, if you want to piss off magicians, what you do is that in the middle of any card trick that they're doing, you just yell card force. So regardless of what they're doing, it doesn't matter if they're even doing a coin trick, you just go card force. And then they're going to get mad and blame YouTube videos for why they no longer get gigs because everyone knows what a card force is. And today we're going to be making use of this deck right here. This is the, the Queen Bee deck of playing cards. Let's lower this a little bit just to make sure that it's the right angle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's a good angle. So you're gonna mix the deck, you're gonna shuffle it, and you're gonna have the spectator cut the card. Maybe I should've used contrasting cards to the actual flooring. I don't know if I have contrasting cards here. Maybe, let's see. Uh, you know, we'll go with a good old fashioned deck of Bin Wangs. I think these are gonna be good. Uh, a good old fashioned deck of Bin Wang playing cards. So let's uh, get back to the standard position we got ourselves in here and use some good old Bin Wangs. Look at this, ripped cards. Uh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, right? So the deck is mixed and shuffled. And let's say that you wanna force, uh, I don't know, you wanna force the, uh, the 10, the 10 of hearts. So you're gonna put the cards on a table, right? And you're gonna have the spectator cut any amount of cards into your hand. Uh, so let's say they cut off that much. You go, sir, let me ask you a question. Are you sure that that's the decision you wanna make at this point? That's how many cards you want to cut off. They might say no. So you say, you know what? We'll do it again, right? We'll do it again. Make sure everything's on the up and up. Please do me a favor and cut off an amount of cards that you feel satisfied with, sir. Let's say they cut off this much and you go, great. Now I want to make sure here, sir, because had you cut one more, it would have been the four of spades or maybe the 10 of, uh, sorry, the nine of hearts. But instead you decided to cut right here at the 10 of hearts, the 10 of hearts, sir. Great choice. Great choice to pick because that's the card that I wanted you to pick. What's interesting right here is that, uh, well, if we would have spread this deck, uh, there's only one card face up. There's only one card face up, and it's the Ten of Hearts. Bet you didn't see that coming, huh, buddy boy? So this is based on the classic crosscut force, right? The classic Max Holden crosscut force. This is a fun one. It's really easy to do and doesn't require any effort on your end other than knowing what the top card of the deck is because that's gonna be the force card. That's gonna be the card that you're gonna force on whatever unsuspecting victim you wanna do this particular trick on. So again, the cross cut force is a very well-known force where you have the spectator cut the cards and you place the uh, remaining half there to ostensibly mark the cards. Now, if you've ever said that I'm gonna mark the cards in this way, well, I'm gonna find you and shoot you. I have several videos where I go over the best way of doing this, and if you wanna check out the Academy, I also have several videos over there. Now, as far as this, this is a variation of that that starts on the table. So right now, the card that's gonna be forced is on top of the deck. We have the seven of clubs. Uh, you're gonna have the spectator cut off as many cards as they want and place it in your left hand. So now, right now, if you haven't realized it, oh yeah, seven of clubs is on this half. It's on this half. So all I need to do now is misdirect their attention for maybe a little bit of time so that they forget the condition of the cards. They're gonna think that maybe they cut the cards from your hand, put it on the table. They don't have good memory because they're lay people. They're lame people. They're retards. So here you're gonna draw 
a lot of misdirection by turning over this card and saying, look, one more card would have been that. Had you cut anywhere else, it would have been different cards. They're not all the same. This isn't one of those TV magic decks. But instead, you decide to cut right here, which gives us the seven of clubs. And of course, you could put that on the table, and that card is now forced. Now, here's what really sells it. When you pick up this half, you're going to pick up this half and drop it on top of the half that you have in your hand. So right now, the perception is that that's where the cards were cut. So you're going to lift up the cards on the table and put them on the cards in your left hand. So now the spectator thinks, oh, yeah, I did have a free choice. Oh, boy, he's being too fair. I wonder where he's going to screw me. Guess what? You already screwed them. You already screwed them, and they don't even know it. So this could be used as a substitute for any sort of force that you need. Maybe if you want to force the card, you don't necessarily have to have knowledge of the card. So if you have the spectator cut the cards, you could say, look, one more would have been the three. Another one would have been the seven. But do me a favor. Remember the card over here. Perfect. Please don't forget it because, uh, well, if you forget it, <laughs> we're not going to have much of a trick later, are we? And uh, go ahead and shuffle the cards. And uh, of course, at that point, you don't know what the card is, but you do know what the card is because you forced it on them. Yeah, card forces are fun. They're pretty fun because... Uh, well, you get to pretty much force something on the spectator without having to get their consent first. You don't need their consent. You could just force a card and they think it's a free choice, but really you forced it on them. So that's a fun one. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are uh, having a good holiday season. Hope you guys have a great Christmas, right? I think uh, Christmas is uh, next week. Ah, man. Oh, boy. I passed out there for a little bit. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> Too much eggnog, right? <laughs> well, apart from that, thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to do everything that people do when it comes to videos. Uh, I, I go live fairly often. I go live fairly often, so you might want to, I don't know, press the notification bell to know when I'm getting live. So you can maybe, uh, I don't know, catch me, catch me, right? No cap. <laughs> uh, don't be sus. I'm going to go figure out different ways to use a ceiling fan. You ever use non-oil based lubricant? Hmm.